Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Sharks for Kids uh, Marine Science Hangout uh, for the month of February. We've had a little change of plans today. Our guest today was going to be uh, Alison Koch from uh, South Africa, but uh, unfortunately we had some internet issues and uh, we weren't able to resolve them. So what we're going to do for today instead is, uh, my name is Joe Grabowski, I'm Education Director with Sharks for Kids, and I'm going to share some of my pictures and video from diving with sharks and other sea creatures from around the world. So we're still going to get a little dose of the ocean, but it's going to be um, a little different than planned. So um, like I said, uh, my name's Joe, I'm a teacher in Guelph, Ontario, and I've been diving since 2007, and I've been very lucky to visit places all over the world. Places like Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, places in the US, Mexico, and uh, to dive in some of those locations. So um, what I'd like to do before I start sharing some of my stuff is sharing some of the classes we have joining us today. So I'm going to turn on some mics. So first we have Mr. Greenfield's class joining us from Freehold, New Jersey. Hi. Hi. We have Mrs. Barry's group joining us from Weatherford, Texas. I believe there are some third graders. Wow. There they are. Awesome. We have Mrs. Diesel's uh, grade twos joining us from Ontario. So about an hour and a little bit away. We've got Mrs. Hill's uh, group. They're joining us from Hutchinson, Kansas. There they are. There's some third graders. And uh, our final group, we have uh, two grade three classes joining us from Pennsylvania. Hi. There they are. Mrs. Riley's and Mr. Cattle's third graders are joining us. Very cool. Nice. So, well, let's jump right into the presentation. Uh, I'm just going to mute the microphone. So my screen's going to share. You're going to see it go kind of funny looking for a second. But then, uh, there we go. All right. I'm going to turn on our microphone. Mr. Greenfield's class, can you see the picture of me on the screen now? All right. So let me just go full size. All right, there we go. So, um, yeah, this is a picture of me. This is uh, actually one of my favorite pictures. This is uh, a picture from my very first uh, dive. And I was very lucky to have somebody there who could take this picture for me. So this was on a reef in uh, Australia, on the Great Barrier Reef, called Norman Reef. And uh, as you can see, I'm pretty excited to be diving. So the dive instructor was able to take that picture for me. If you're diving, you sometimes end up taking selfies, pictures of yourself. So this was in uh, Cozumel, a little island in Mexico. And then sometimes I like to go diving without flippers. All covered in turtles. Turtles poking their heads out. So I brought one up to take a closer look. Sometimes you find things in the water that aren't supposed to be there. And so you can kind of goof around with them a little. So here's me experimenting and trying a little bit of underwater bike riding. Didn't go so well. It was harder than it looks. And the first group of pictures that we'll go through are from the Great Barrier Reef. So very lucky to spend a year in Australia and get to dive on reefs uh, in this region. So it stretches for 2,300 kilometers, the largest living structure uh, on the planet. It's actually 3,000 individual reefs and 900 islands. Um, and it's the only structure created by living things uh, visible from space. So it's actually created by tiny little creatures called polyps, and it takes tens of thousands of years. 
And there we go, our first shark. So this is a uh, black tip reef shark and very important species on the reef because they're keystone species. They're right at the top of the food chain and they keep populations healthy by um, picking off the, the weaker fish, uh, the fish that might be sicker, and they also um, control the population levels. So keep um, other species of fish from eating their food supply and causing problems within the ecosystem. So that's a black tip reef shark. And the one thing I've always noticed about sharks when I'm diving is, you know, they might come in for a quick look to see what you are, but they're not interested. They move on pretty quickly. So uh, usually you have to kind of follow the shark if you want to get a picture of it. There's a couple of reef sharks as I'm making my way down uh, an anchor line to the, the ocean floor. And a few more swimming above. Okay, nice view with the sun over top. Lots of parrotfish on the reef, so it's not quiet down there. You'd think it might be quiet underwater. Obviously, you hear your bubbles, but um, it's also crunching. Crunch, 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 crunch as these parrotfish um, nibble on the coral. And it's actually kind of neat. If you watch them long enough, they actually poop out sand, uh, what they can't digest. And if you're on a beach somewhere tropical, odds are that sand has passed through a parrotfish and been pooped out after it got what it needed from it. A little Finding Nemo action, you see the clownfish, um, always neat to see on the reef. Giant clams, um, and they get their name for a good reason. If you have a meter stick or a yard stick in your classroom and, and you can hold one up, that's the size of that clam. Pretty big. Green sea turtles, some of my favorite creatures to swim with in the water. This is a nice young one swimming in front of um, some coral. And then as they get older, you notice more kind of algae and barnacles kind of growing on their shells. So they don't look this pretty for too long. Stingray, blue spotted stingray, relaxing on the bottom. And then these pictures switch over again. So I'm in a different location now, this time in Fiji. And this is a white tip reef shark. So these guys usually come out more active in the evening, but they're pretty active during the day as well. And um, again, they're top predators on the reef. Sometimes it's neat to get down right at the bottom and look for the little things, the little things that most people might miss. Um, little nudibranch, these guys are pretty cool. Almost look like a slug, really small, but beautiful colors to warn predators away. And if you see the little frills in the back end, those are actually its lungs. Nudibranch means naked lungs, so the lungs are outside of the body. We've got some cuttlefish. Very smart, very curious. Right, come right up to the camera, see what you are. To me, I've always thought of them, they look like a cross between a squid and an octopus. Scorpion fish, beautiful camouflage. Okay, most times you'll swim right over them, but they do have um, poisonous spines. They can protect themselves in another way too, if you get too close. These shots are from Cozumel in Mexico. Beautiful little island. Awesome diving because you jump in the water and the current does the work. You don't even have to kick. The boat picks you up further down the reef and you just relax and glide over top of the reef. It's the closest thing to flying. Little arrow club, uh, living in a sponge. Got some cave diving. When you go down cavern diving at the base of the reefs. Eels in little cracks and crevices. When you dive, you always have to keep your lookout in the the cracks, the crevices, uh, you never know what you're going to come across, and a nurse shark. So these nurse sharks, beautiful sharks, usually active during the day, or sorry, at night, uh, during the day. They usually be found in caverns, sitting on the ocean floor. Lots of species of sharks have to keep swimming um, in order to keep oxygen passing over their gills. But there are some species, like the nurse shark, who can sit on the bottom and actively pump water over their gills. And uh, obviously, it's a great adaptation to be able to stay in one place during the day. And then at night, we did some night dives, and we got to see some of these guys in action uh, at night. Schools of fish, beautiful colors. Stingray showing off some amazing camouflage. 
splendid toadfish, only found in Cozumel, the only place in the world. So it's called an endemic species because you only find it in one spot. This is a hawksbill sea turtle, and you notice the color's blue. It looks like the color's been taken right out of this picture. And in a sense, it has been because the deeper you go in the water, the wavelengths of color uh, all have different lengths, and they slowly um, lose their ability to penetrate deeper. So red and your oranges and yellows go first, and when you get deep enough, you just kind of got this blue, sometimes little dark greens. There's a little juvenile hawksbill sea turtle about the size of a plate. At night, a new crew comes out on the reef. So when you go in at night with your little spotlight, um, the diurnal or daytime creatures have tucked themselves away, and the night crew is out. So we've got lobsters on the reef. You can just see in this picture, just barely caught this one in time, uh, a nurse shark passing through my spotlight, hunting. An octopus, a lot of fun to watch on the reef at night. They're changing colors, they're moving, they're sliding into crevices, they're looking for food on the bottom. They're actively hunting. And then these little worms, you're, they love your light. They're all over your little light. Really weird feeling to feel them all over your hands, kind of picking, picking, picking. Eels, this is another place in Mexico, Puerto Vallarta. Got a puffer fish. Here's what it looks like when it's relaxed. And here's what it looks like when it's defending itself. So it fills with water. Doesn't look like a tasty treat now, that's for sure. Got some more stingrays, which, as most of you probably do know, related to the sharks. And then wreck diving. Wreck diving is always a lot of fun. So um, not only are the animals cool, but up here in Canada, we do some cold water diving, and there's thousands of shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. So this is Tobermory. This is a wreck called the Four City, about 150 feet um, below the surface in Georgian Bay. There's a few divers making their way along the side. A few more. And this is right at the back, right at the stern of the ship, where it's resting in the muck. Another shot of it. So, uh, as you can see, diving is a lot of fun. Uh, you get to see a lot of really neat things. What I'm going to do now is just switch over and load up um, some video for you. So, we'll head over. I'm going to show you some video from uh, last March break when I went to Bimini in the Bahamas and was able to dive with some really awesome sharks. So let's see, we're still sharing screen, that's a good thing. All right, so here we go. Here's some hammerheads in Bimini. So it's a very shallow dive, only about 20, 25 feet. Very warm water, you sit on the bottom, um, and it's almost like being at an airport where the planes line up and come in one by one. And that's exactly what these great hammerheads were doing. They were taking their turns, very polite sharks, um, coming in, checking us out. Uh, the diver did have a little bit of fish scraps, which kept the water interesting for them, right? Gave them a reason to come close by, and they just come in one at a time. And uh, yeah, it was, I mean, amazing. Never felt nervous, never felt like they were um, a threat at all. The only thing is once in a while, they're so big, you know, these sharks can be 8, 10, 12 feet. So um, the only thing is every once in a while, one might bump into you as it's swimming by. But uh, yeah, not hard. And I mean, you just sit down here for hours as these creatures came in. And every once in a while you might catch a glimpse of a nurse shark on the bottom. Because just like the hammerheads like to come in and see what's going on, uh, the nurse sharks like to be there too to see if there's anything that they can uh, take advantage of and get a hold of. Beautiful creatures. They visit uh, Bimini uh, each year 
for a period of time on their migration. And uh, yeah, the Bahamas is a wonderful place to dive for sharks. So many species. I think on my trip there, I was able to free dive or dive with seven or eight species of sharks. And they just keep coming. You don't get a break, and it's like that for, you know, almost an hour. A lot of fun. All right. I'm going to switch over here. I'll show you another little neat video. This is a bull shark. I know a few of you had mentioned that bull sharks um, were your favorite. So this is actually right in the marina on the uh, North Island of Bimini. And you can be sitting and having a nice meal. And you can watch uh, the bull sharks come right up to um, the side of the marina. So you're going to see. You can see it swimming down below. And then something's got its interest on the surface. And up it comes. So these sharks impress me a lot. Their size impressed me a lot. So they weren't overly large, maybe six to seven feet, but their girth, the thickness of these sharks was awesome. Um, at least three feet or more. Very thick, very stocky sharks, and that's where they get their name from. Um, we, um, they were interested in that area because fishermen obviously clean their catches and it's a, a free meal and actually the the kitchen for this restaurant was right there so as the chef would be cutting fish to prepare for people the scraps would go over into the water and they were not wasted they were taken care of very quickly and then maybe I'll show you one more video uh, this is in Australia and this is with some stingrays so if you put three or four of your desks together you get an idea of how big these guys were That gives you an idea of some of my adventures and some places that I've been. So let me turn the share screen back off. Um, okay, I should be back. Everybody, give a wave if you're able to see some of those pictures and videos. Hi, good morning, everyone. Well, actually, All right. good morning. Perfect. Watching from so, where my um, let's visit some classrooms. I'd love to hear some of your questions about sharks, some of the places I visited, some of the creatures that I've been able to dive with, everything and anything. Uh, let's start with our grade threes in Kansas. Okay. Um, let's see. Brighton, what's your question? Okay. What's your favorite shark? All right, that's a good question. Uh, for the longest time, it was great whites. They're such cool sharks. They're so big and powerful. Um, but, you know, after spending, I'd say, over a couple days, six hours with the great hammerheads, uh, just such amazing sharks to see. The way they move through the water, the size they are. Um, yeah, I would, so I'd say right now, and it could change depending on where I dive next, but right now the great hammerheads are my favorite. When you were a kid, were you afraid of sharks? That's a good question, and the answer is no. I don't know why, but for some reason... I was never afraid of sharks. I think um, I grew up in Ontario, a city called Guelph, so there's no real oceans close by. So I was always fascinated by the ocean, and I wanted to explore and dive and see things that I saw in books and on TV. So, you know, when it finally happened, I was so excited that I think I forgot to be scared. And sharks have never given me a reason to be scared when I dive with them. Let's grab one more from your group. When did you start diving? Well... 
I lived in Australia, 2007, for um, a year, and that's where I started. So my very first dive ever was on the Great Barrier Reef, one of the most beautiful places um, you can dive in the world. And uh, I kept training. I came back home and continued training, got new certifications so I could dive deeper uh, with different types of gas mix in my tank so I could stay down longer. Um, so yeah, since 2007. Training every year to get new specialties and try new things. Good <laughs> questions. Uh, let's visit our grade twos in Bradford. Okay. Have you ever been injured underwater? I have never, never, never been injured underwater. And that actually brings up a good point because one thing I get asked a lot about is why I bring a dive knife with me when I dive. People always guess, is it for sharks? Is it to protect yourself from creatures, maybe stingrays or something, but actually um, it's used for a few reasons like entanglement. So there's always old fishing lines sometimes, um, old fishing nets and such, and if you were to get snagged on one, maybe a wire in a shipwreck, you need something sharp to be able to cut yourself loose. So I've never been injured, um, and I always dive with a knife, but it's not to protect myself from sea creatures. It's to protect myself from getting tangled up in something. Do you use different equipment when you dive in Ontario? <laughs> you know, um, diving in Ontario is cold water diving. So it's got to be a little tough to dive in the Great Lakes at some, t some part of the year. So uh, depending on where I dive, I will different amounts of protection. So. If I were diving in Australia and it was some nice warm water, I might just strap on my scuba gear over top of, say, my bathing suit and a t-shirt and dive that way because the water's so warm. Somewhere like um, Sydney or off the coast of North Carolina, I might wear a wetsuit that's about three milliliters or millimeters thick, and that protects me from the cold and lets me stay under a little longer. When I dive in Canada. I wear a wetsuit that's 14 millimeters thick, right over my core, so it keeps my chest and torso nice and warm because the water is a lot colder. So I've actually been diving in water up here when the ice is melting. So there's still ice on the water. It's got to be tough to dive in Canada. Let's grab one more question. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. How many? That's it for us. Thank you. All right. Mrs. Berry's grade threes. Mm -hmm. Questions about diving or sharks? Yes. How many turtles have you seen? No, oh, I've lost count. Um, when I first started diving, it was always su such a treat, and it still is. It's always amazing to be able to see them, but. I guess I was spoiled when diving in Cozumel, and every dive, um, you know, you'd see five, six, seven sea turtles. So um, if I had to add it all up, probably somewhere in the 40s or 50s sea turtles that I've, that I've seen on different dives in different places around the world. Do you want to pick them from me? Hey, Jane. You're going to have to look in the computer, okay? Um, when, when did, when did you, um, get, uh, okay, Josh, go ahead. when did you see your first shark? My first shark? was um, actually wasn't even on a diving trip. It was a snorkeling trip. And uh, I'll never forget it because all the other snorkelers in the water, so this is on the Great Barrier Reef, uh, just off of a town called Townsville. And all, all the other divers were swimming away. Or sorry, the snorkelers. And you know the, everyone was shouting across the water, shark, shark. And everybody was kind of swimming back towards the boat. And I think I was the only one actually swimming towards the shark. And it ended up being just a little reef shark and, oh, it couldn't have been more than two, three feet. But um, people see so much in the media about sharks and how they're so dangerous. And 
they're on the hunt for humans when that couldn't be further from the truth. So it was really interesting to see so many people swimming away from a fish that was only about two or three feet, uh, two or three feet long and absolutely harmless. So um, in the media, you do hear a lot of negative things about sharks and how they are dangerous and a threat to humans. But if you actually go around the world and add it up, there's roughly 100 shark encounters uh, each year uh, with people, so negative encounters where someone is bitten. Out of those 100 or so, roughly five people are killed. And it's never great when something like that happens, obviously. But um, if you look at how many sharks we kill a year, we take out of the water um, through fishing, say bycatch, or uh, fishing for their fins, um, it adds up to somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to 100 million. So we take way more sharks out of the water each year. And I'm sure you've heard this before, if you're a shark and you're hunting and you're looking up through the murky water and you see a surfer on a surfboard, it looks a lot like a sea turtle, looks a lot like a seal. So a lot of uh, bites do happen through mistake. And most people survive because the shark realizes, whoa, this is not a seal, this is not a turtle, and it leaves. And that's, that's how most people do manage to get to shore and survive. That's a good question. Snag one more, if there is one. How can we help sharks? Okay, that's another great question. Uh, lots of things you can do. One thing you can do is tell people what you hear today about sharks is that they aren't that big of a threat. They're actually in trouble and they're threatened. Uh, their survival. 90% of some populations of sharks uh, have been wiped out due to human activities. So best thing you can do is tell people what you learn about sharks, that they aren't the big scary creatures that many people think they are. So that's one really important thing you can do. Another is pay attention to some of the products you buy. A lot of products you buy, and you might not know this, do have um, some shark product in them. So certain supplements um, do, um, certain makeups might have um, some shark product in them. Souvenirs, a lot of souvenir places in places like Florida might sell baby sharks in a jar or shark teeth or actual jaws. So that's another thing you could do. Um, and one thing my class has done in the past, when we found out that shark fin products weren't banned, uh, we wrote letters to our prime minister telling him that we really think that these types of things should be banned uh, in Canada. So there's lots of things that you guys can do, even at a young age, to help protect sharks. And then let's visit our last group, Mr. Greenfield's class. Do you guys have a couple questions about sharks? Hi, my name is Ella, and have you ever seen a wabagong shark? Sorry, can I... It just got loud in here because some kids came in from recess. Can I hear your question one more time? Have you ever seen a wabagong shark? Oh, good question. So wabagongs are really cool sharks. Sometimes they're called like carpet sharks because their bodies are very flat. They have frills all along the sides, really cool color patterns, and they can blend right into the ocean floor. And they're really good ambush hunters. So obviously they're another species of shark that can breathe while laying on the bottom. Um, in Australia, I really wanted to see one. I looked and looked and looked, and I didn't see a wabagong shark. I did see Port Jackson sharks, which are another really cool shark that lives in Australia. So you can check out their picture. They've got a really neat looking head, probably unlike anything you've seen on a shark before. Um, but no wabagongs, unfortunately. Just wasn't lucky. Thank you. Good question. Hi, I'm Courtney. What was the dangerous shark you've ever seen before? Did you, sorry Courtney, was that what, what's the most endangered? Oh no, what's the dangerous shark you've ever seen? The dangerous? Hmm. Well, um, let's see. I don't consider, like me, myself personally, and all my experience with the sharks, I don't see them as dangerous, but. Um, if you had to look around the world, um, most bites do happen from three species of sharks. So tiger shark, 
bull shark or great white. And so while I was in Bimini, I did get to see uh, a few bull sharks. So um, the best answer is, I guess that would be the most dangerous. But again, I think in the right environment and diving with them properly that they're not that big of a threat. Good question. Hi, my name is Matthew. Um, there's no school on Shark Week, but what do you usually do there with them? Sorry, bud. Can you come closer to the microphone? I missed that one. Um, what do you usually do during Shark Week? Because what? there's no school. What do I do during Shark Week? Yeah. Oh, well, um, Shark Week usually is in the summer. I think you're right. Um, even though I don't like a lot of the shows that are that are on Shark Week because they really go out of their way, some of the shows, to portray sharks kind of in a negative light, um, I do still watch because there are those hidden gems. Like this year, there was a great, great one um, using a lot of footage from BBC Shark, which was an amazing three-part series um, put out by the BBC in the UK. Um, so that was a great one. Um, so I do watch, but I avoid some of the shows like Megalodon Lives and shows like that because, or Great White Serial Killer, because they just really portray sharks poorly and they really use bad science. So I do watch uh, during Shark Week, but not every show. Some of them I can't. Okay. Good question. All right. Well... Boys and girls, um, thank you so much for hanging around today. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm sorry Allison couldn't make it, but we will try to see if we can figure out what happened today. It could just be as simple as internet. Sometimes in South Africa, um, you know, the connection isn't as reliable as it is here. So I want to thank you for hanging out today, uh, for joining our Sharks for Kids Marine Hangout, our Plan B Hangout. I hope that I showed you some cool pictures and video. You learned a little bit about sharks and scuba diving today. Um, please do head to Sharks for Kids. Check out really cool videos, uh, interviews, curriculum, all kinds of information about sharks. So sharksforkids.com. Follow some of our adventures on Facebook, Twitter, um, Google+. Uh, you won't regret it. Uh, some amazing videos up there. Two in particular. There's a hammerhead, a great hammerhead video, and a Caribbean reef shark I think you'd really enjoy if you check it out. So, uh, again, thanks for joining. I'm going to sign out for today. Uh, I'll just turn the microphones on if the classes want to say goodbye. And, uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for sticking around. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.